so I had my game session last night. This is not a full recap of that, but it was very eventful. And it's this event that I want to talk about specifically in the context of OSR games and some of the challenges that folks face with the deadliness and how you can have a little bit of fun with this deadliness. In my case, my party had found themselves inside a bit of a dungeon, completely kind of ad hoc. I was sort of ad-libbing this space they're in my version of the Feywild, and they ended up in these kind of barrow area standing stones in horrible weather, and I decided to take a page out of Fellowship of the Ring and have them end up in this sort of supernatural, undead-ish, tomb, catacomb, burial, maze, or dungeon. Found a quick map online, I think it was a Dyson Logos map, and I was off to the races. That started off in the session before this one, Last night they were continuing to walk around. They had actually ended the first session in this space, having battled some ghouls and really kicked their butts. Uh, it was uh, it was super super impressive how that they made quick work of it. Just they beat them in initiative. Some got some good rolls, and then bam, the ghouls ghouls were toast. So they followed where the ghouls had come from, and I had looked and kind of spotted a place on the map where there were these kind of vault little tombs, not little tombs three of them there had been three ghouls and I had put these big slab doors open sort of I, I was hoping indicating to the party that hey this is where the this is where the ghouls emanated from I don't think they actually put that together but they ended up going in the first room and exploring found a little bit of loot they went to the second room and here's where I decided to have some fun with a monster that I kind of like even though it's sort of deadly and odd and that's yellow mold so i talked about how there was this kind of dust like covering yellow covering on the inside of the door and also somewhat in the floor which was open they could see into because the door was ajar and that it had been disturbed once previously which was when that other ghoul had come out now there's probably a little bit of a something that they didn't look for and i didn't mention which was was there any yellow mold on one of the ghouls they fought there wasn't but nobody has the question so i didn't have to deal with that particular uh, issue of, say, a continuity, let's say. So one of the players decides to come up and touch it. Now, if you read the yellow mold entry in the uh, in the BX monster section, it basically says there's you, you attack it. If you attack it, there's a 50% chance of it releasing that cloud, a deadly cloud of spores. So the first player goes, touches it with their finger. I rolled and it didn't come up. So they touched it, they got a little bit on their finger and then they, they tasted it. So I had to make a uh, saving throw versus death. And then I, they passed the save and I, I mentioned how their, their just their whole body, their tongue, all their, their atoms seem to just recoil from this stuff. It's just, and they, they spend the next minute just hacking and, and spitting it up. So the other players, so I have two players. The other player goes, oh, this is pretty interesting. And he had, a, which was a good idea, which is let's save some of the stuff. Let's grab some of it save it maybe we can deploy in some situation so they get one of these little sacks and then they go and they say okay I take my dagger and i basically use it to kind of rake scoop some of this yellow mold to put it in the sack all right so they put their they plunge their dagger into the stuff i rolled this time the spores burst so i so i i mentioned how there's a little bit it's kind of spongy and all of a sudden there's this cloud of very fine even finer than this kind of stuff just sprays out, sprays out everywhere. So I narrated how this stuff just sprays out everywhere. Now everyone, the first player, I gave them a pass. They were further away. They were in a corner kind of retching. So I said, okay, not him, but everybody else has to roll safe. Well, the player who had the dagger fails a save, as does this unconscious goblin follower that they had fails their save. Luckily, their other uh, two, three henchmen or two henchmen and one sort of NPC hanger on at this point past their saves. They were okay. When you read the description for yellow mold, failing the save, it says you go end up in coughing fits and you die in six, six turns, either six rounds, or six turns. In any case, I, whether it was originally rounds, I used turns because the first goblin had already been unconscious from other stuff that had happened. I accelerated what was happening to her which was kind of nice because it actually ended up foreshadowing. They could see the foreshadowing of what this stuff's going to do. So first she's unconscious and it's a female goblin. She's coughing and hacking up and then she goes into convulsions. 
the other player is just, is just can't control themselves, coughing, hacking. And the party, the other player is starting to try to figure out, well, what can we do? So now what happened is over the course of the rest of this session, this happened fairly early on in the session, was them trying to save this character. And I had, I'm looking at this and say, okay, they have a six turn clock. What can they do? What can they do in those six turns? Granted, by the book, it's just six turns and you die. But that to me is, not even, it's not even that it's unfun. I just think that there's a lot more tension and fun to be had when it's not just, okay, you're dead. It's just gonna say, take six turns, start rolling up a new character or take over a, a, a hireling. It's, well, what can you do? Now you're on, you're on, the, you're on the clock. Death is six turns away. What can you do? So they start trying to figure stuff out. Okay, can we give them water? Sure. Can we do this or that? Now, what, what, what I would, what I was, how I was handling this was if I felt they had done something interesting that might actually have a, an effect on the stuff, and I was just really interpreting it from the little bit of description and, and stat block that you get, I was willing to give a save, but at, at a penalty. So if you needed a 16 to pass it originally, now you needed an 18. So, okay, so. I, I put, try to have them drink a bunch of water. And I thought, I don't think that's gonna help very much because you're just kind of pushing it around the system. You're not really getting rid of it. But I thought, well, I'll give you a save. Let's just say, and I'm, I'm not trying to be mean and I'm, I'm happy to give folks chances. Like, I'll give you a save. Almost made it. So I said, uh, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of time to your clock. So I had the PC say, all right, you, you did this thing and it has this effect. And it actually might not have been the water thing. It might've been something else they were trying. Roll a D4. All right, they roll a D4 and they roll a four. I said, okay, keep that in mind, that's the clock. I said, there's some time you don't know how much he has, but on top of that, you have, you bought yourself four extra turns. Now what do you do? And then they were trying all kinds of stuff. And each time they really try something, I would reduce that clock by one. All right, now three turns, two turns. I decided, and this is kind of, the players actually sort of came up with this and I ran with it based off the fact that it doesn't like fire. Yellow mold, it's, it, uh, it, it doesn't like, it, it's, not, uh, it's not vulnerable to much, but it doesn't like fire. So I narrated when the party, because it took a while for them to actually start you know, touching or sort of examining the, 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 the character as opposed to just kind of looking at them, that his body was getting really cold, just cold, cold, cold. And I was just thinking that this is what the yellow mold does. It invades an organism, it doesn't like heat, so the first thing it starts doing is getting rid of all that heat and then it, when it dies and it's super cold, then it can start to use it as a breeding ground for more yellow mold. Oh, it's cold. Cold, 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 cold. And then they, they kind of uh, got on this idea of, well, we need to get fire. We need to get warm them up, warm up the body. So they, were, they took all their torches and they, they basically made a bonfire out of it. They, they took old clothes. They took a rag or the clothes that they had. They they, uh, they they smashed up the remains of their ten foot poles, dropped it and everything. They took oil, poured it on there. So they went through a bunch of these iterations, and they ended up at a spot where they had about ten turns because they had they'd done a couple of other things that worked. It didn't work. They got to about ten turns, and I think that they were at eight turns when they when the uh, I had them roll save because they were doing all kinds of stuff. We're gonna have everybody lay around them. We're gonna put them near the fire. We're gonna do all this stuff. And they were taking damage from the fire because they're putting them right in it. They wanted to put their head in steam, all these things. I finally got it to, okay, he rolled a save. Now the save doesn't mean he's out of the woods. What I narrated was he, he seems stable. He's not getting worse, but he's unconscious. And of course the yellow mold's still in there. So now the interesting question is, well, what are they gonna do with that? And the, the thing, how I ended the session is They've used all their torches, all their burnable materials are in this bonfire, which is now quickly, uh, quickly falling, um, burning up. So now darkness is closing in. They're in an underground place and they kind of got warped into this. They don't know in the exits. They don't know what's in here. One of the party members is unconscious. They have a dead goblin now and darkness is closing in. So the takeaway from this, if you want to think about, well, this is a great story, Todd, but how is this applicable to me is to use what's given in the books as a jumping off point for what you want to do. Just because it says death in six turns doesn't mean you have to just do that. Make something more interesting. I think my party had a lot of fun with trying to figure out this pressing problem. It doesn't take away, from my mind anyway, the danger of this stuff. It doesn't make it any less lethal but it feels more like they have options, that there are things they can try, that they can, hey, I'm, I've had a short about rule of cool, talked about that a couple times. What can you come up with? Can you come up with something to change change the game? And that's what I explained to them. I said, listen, 
because they were asking, well, how do we get another, how can we trigger another save? How can we get some help? And I said, you gotta come up with something game changing. You tried something, it worked, just iterating on that isn't enough. Give me something that really changes the game. And they did that. And I think it'll be a very memorable moment in the campaign. I think it, I think it actually, as well as anything, shows just how lethal and dangerous the dungeon is, even if it doesn't actually end up killing them. They're at a huge disadvantage now in a very dangerous space. And it really allowed them to kind of flex their imagination and ingenuity muscles in a really meaningful way for them and their characters. Anyhow, I just wanted to share that because it happened and I thought it was a lot of fun. Game on. Talk to you later.